Hi friends, good morning. Today I'm going to show you my day of a showgirl in a quarantine. I have booked a show that is going to go live tomorrow, Monday, and I have to send a video of me go-go dancing to one of my favorite jazz bands in New York City, Svetlana and the Delancey Five. I used to work with them so, so much when I lived back in New York City. Often it was the highlight of my career. I will show you my whole day and I will tell you how that works while I'm brushing my teeth. Hey, before we get any further, I wanted to jump in here with a quick burlesque reel and introduction. My name is Karina and I'm a burlesque performer. Burlesque is a beautiful performance art form combining dance, comedy, satire and striptease. It can be anything really. I have acts ranging from classic burlesque, think old Hollywood glamour, corsets, big boys and feather fans, all the way to fetish and nerdlesque acts. I did burlesque full-time for several years in New York City and all over the country where I performed in hundreds of shows. Like many other burlesque performers, I also did a lot of gigs as an art model, secret girl and vintage go-go dancer, which is exactly the type of a gig I am preparing for in this video. Go-go dancing for a jazz band. Performing with a live band is my most favorite thing to do in the world, by the way. A couple of years ago, I moved to Vermont and soon after that, 2020 hit and this is when this video was made. Hope you enjoyed. I'll leave my burlesque website in the description below in case you want to check it out as well. I always say that I wouldn't be in tech if it wasn't for burlesque, neither would I be a landlady or the person that I am today. Burlesque is pure magic and I'm always happy to share that magic with you. Now let's get back to my day. So the band reached out to me and they said, hey, due to the quarantine, of course, everything is closed. So we are going live online um, on social media. Uh, I, I need coffee. I can't film before coffee. Okay, let me brush my teeth, wash my face, have coffee, and then I'll talk to you. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show you what I'm using to brush my teeth because this is important and amazing. We're using this toothpaste bits called Bite, which has absolutely changed my life. It's a zero waste. It comes in the glass jar that can be reused or recycled, unlike the plastic toothpaste tubes, which never get recycled. So every plastic tube from any toothpaste you have ever used still exists in the universe. It's rotting in the landfill somewhere. How do you feel about that? I don't feel good about that. That's why I switched to Bites. And I really like it. It's super fun. You put it on your tongue and you kind of chew on it, wet your toothpaste brush then you just start brushing like the regular toothpaste but it's so much more fun I like it because with a regular toothpaste I'm like I'm there I never know how much to put some days I put too much some days I put too little but with this it's already precise for you so that's one less decision you have to make a day I like to live minimally and to reduce the amount of decisions I have to make a day in my routine daily tasks I prefer to leave my decision-making force to my career and my job and things that truly matter. I'm <sighs> washing my face and if you can hear music in the background, this is the band's music that they sent me. So I'm listening. While I'm listening, I'm noticing the songs that I like the most and that I think fit the best for the go-go. I would say the music that I would choose for the go-go set is completely different from the music I would choose for my regular burlesque act. I'm looking for very specific things. Now I'm gonna moisturize my face and this is my favorite thing in the world, Yay for Earth Face Lotion. It is amazing and incredible and if you have ever used Egyptian Magic Lotion or something like that, this is very similar to it. I know a lot of showgirls love that Egyptian Magic Lotion. They would say that it makes them like 20 years younger and you can put it on your butt and on your thighs and just everywhere. It does magic to your skin, but that one comes in the plastic and this one comes in glass jar and um, has a thin lid, so fully recyclable, fully reusable, zero waste, and that is important. Also, this jar that I showed you, I think it's gonna last me for about two years. I only use it for face right now. When I use it, it's like that much. This is great. Now I'm full of shame because this is probably the most wasteful thing I use in my daily routine. Ear swaps. So I ask you if you know a more sustainable option for these guys, please let me know down below in the comments. I'm always open and always looking for sustainable products to switch to. 
Oh, don't you know that like there is like a G spot inside your ear and you hit it and it's stuck. Excuse me. Oh, okay, that felt great. Now I'm gonna brush three of my hairs I have left after shaving my head. All my life I used to have hair long like up to my butt. So this is very liberating to me. I love it. All right, coffee. Hi friends, now that I'm standing in my fully remodeled kitchen that I, by the way, fully remodeled by myself, watch out for those videos later, and I'm finally ready to take a sip of coffee and talk to you more or less normally. Whew. By the way, the robe I'm wearing I bought in Vietnam about exactly 10 years ago. I paid for it around $2. Now that's an investment, my friends. I will wear it forever. Nice. Okay, now let's put some uh, breakfast together and I'm super excited to have for the first time my breakfast outside because just yesterday my friend and I went to pick up a picnic table which is also used, which is perfect. And now I have a picnic table in my backyard here in Vermont and I'm going to have my breakfast outside. If you can see the clock, it is 1.47 p.m. in the afternoon, which is still a morning for a showgirl because we're used to go to bed at 7 a.m. after the shows and now even though it's quarantine and the shows are gone, I guess old habits die hard. I still stay up till the morning too often. It's nice to have a Sunday brunch at 1.47. I spent the next hour or two in the backyard working on my track list for the night. Even though it might look like I'm not doing much besides devouring this breakfast of champions, I'm actually working hard on music selection, which is critical in our craft. Music can really make or break your act and should be taken very seriously in consideration. When I first started performing, my acts were inspired by specific songs and I would build an entire routine around it. But I noticed that later on in my career I would start from a piece of costume or a character, a story, a dance move that inspires me and then try and find the perfect music to fit, which can be a very hard task. Sometimes it takes us years to find the perfect music for an act and several attempts and that is perfectly okay. Burlesque is a fascinating journey. Tonight, however, I have a go-go dancing gig, so I need to pick several tracks from one band, Svetlana and the Delancey Five. I'll leave the link to their channel below. So you can see me here, listening, scrolling through their every single track and moving the ones that fit into the go-go music folder on my computer. For burlesque acts, I choose big music with bumps and grinds, loud and unapologetic, with big breaks strong climax and a lot of drama. <laughs> I almost said big breasts instead of big breaks. <laughs> a crying saxophone is a very desired bonus add too, but for the go-go, however, I look for completely different things, mainly the songs that will not exhaust me. <laughs> a go-go set lasts about 20 minutes and I need to make sure that I can deliver my best 100% of the time until I step off that stage. Tonight the stage be my whole way. I chose several cheerful tracks that are catchy, quite repetitive, with strong structure and a nice beat. While listening to them, I already knew more or less how I'm going to dance, since I always see choreography in my head. During long commutes in New York City, I would actually use this trick to rehearse entire acts right in the subway, in the privacy of my own head. Hi friends and welcome back! to the day of the show girl. I did spend a big part of the day responding to the emails. As we say in burlesque, it takes us about 20 hours a day to sit in front of a computer and just five hours a day of performing to make this job happen. But right now I am about to recrowd my bathroom for the third time and also tape over the edges to make it look nice and smooth. This may be not what you expected for a day of a showgirl, but this is the reality behind the scenes. Also, somebody's having a wildly loud sex next door in the house next door. There is a driveway between us, but I can hear them so loud. Trying to concentrate on regrouting. Anyway, my life is so much more fun than theirs. Let's get started.
As you might know from my YouTube channel, I have recently purchased my first home and investment property. Please check out my home buying series playlist where I talk all about it. What you don't know is that I also fully renovated it all by myself without any experience. And this is what you're getting a little glimpse of today. By this time I've already fully remodeled my kitchen and bathroom, I also tiled my bathroom myself. So today I had to come back and fix my grout job, as well as the edging. These little small things often take the longest time and can have surprisingly big impact. I honestly believe that my pull towards carpentry has its roots in my burlesque career. It was due to building burlesque costumes that I first set my foot into a hardware store and have been completely mesmerized ever since. I filmed myself on every step of the way and I promise all these DIY videos are going to be posted on this channel, so stay tuned. A few hours later I moved on to fixing the closet door, which has been bothering me for 4 months. And being the person I am, of course I came fully prepared. I have a top pivot, <laughs> bottom pivot, guy pivot, also have this ping ping things, what are they called, <laughs> on top and I also have that, that thing in the bottom. <laughs> So I think I'm good. I'll try to install them. You can laugh at me. That's okay. Let's do this. Ow, 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 ow. Okay. Okay, my fingers are okay. Needless to say that even after a couple of hours spent in the closet, I still couldn't install this door. Bifold doors are real tricky. But I came back the next day and finally figured it out. I included here the spoiler alert from the future for you to see what that little victory looked like. <gasps> So the secret was you have to tune up the bottom pivot, you kids. <laughs> and now after all day of hard work it is time to get back to burlesque and put my makeup on. Ta -da! Just so you understand, it is already midnight and I'm just starting to get ready. And here we go. <laughs> I actually filmed an entire showgirl makeup tutorial as well, where I explain how I do my stage makeup, hair, apply eyelashes and do the famous glitter lips. I will be posting it as a separate video next week, so please make sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so you do not miss it. I hope you like my look. I should do that thing now. Hi friends, now I'm quickly gonna show you what I'm going to wear. I decided to stick with black and gold, so this is the color neck piece I'm going to wear. Beautiful body harness, it was made by Delilah, and then I hand sewn this beautiful gold applique on it. It goes like this, and then it crosses here, and I normally wear it with the pasties. Sexy. My main piece is going to be this flapper piece that I also ordered from Etsy. It was also made by Showgirl. It's a little confusing, sometimes hard to get into it, especially if you're in a rush changing costumes. But it goes like this, around here, here, and around your neck. I will show you how it looks in a second. I think I will need pasties under it, because it's a little transparent. However, because I will be so far from the camera, nobody will know, except for you. I might also wear these gold gloves. I would prefer to wear black gloves, but I'm too lazy to look for them now, so these were in the bag, I might wear them. I also might wear this skirt on top. It is a part of my costume for this act, and then I remove it. I think I might put it on today, just because this event is PG-15, I would say. And I think it's fun for go-go dancing, because you can do a lot of fringe shimming. Last but not least, I'm going to wear these shoes that I personally have rhinestoned. Look at this. Look at this. This is dozens of hours of very meticulous work for one shoe. And guess what? I rhinestone both of them. Yeah, that's showgirl skills for you. It costs a lot of money to look that cheap, as you know. I'm gonna put this on off camera because this is not YouTube material. And 
now we're on to the fun part, actual performing, which always takes only about 1% of the time. I was in the middle of renovation, so I set up an imaginary stage in the hallway, which is actually perfect, because this is exactly the size of the go-go booth we normally have. Most often we'll go-go dance on top of the bar or literally in the windowsill, and rarely on stage, depending on the venue. For this event, I dressed in my flapper costume, which, by the way, this act accidentally went viral on YouTube with over 1 million views. I hid it for now due to the music copyright claim, but will shortly bring it back for you. So remember to subscribe to my channel. Speaking of copyright, I'm not using the original music here, just to be safe, but I will leave the link in the description below for you to check out the band. I chose another jazz song in a very similar style for this video. As you can see, my moves here are very sweet and gentle, so to speak. Every event and venue is different, and so is the style of performing. We always know what is expected, and sometimes we get to be as raunchy as we want, and sometimes we keep it more on the cutesy patootsy kind of side, like I am here. This event is very old New York jazz era situation with live band and swing dancers. It's normally hosted at a real speakeasy and is absolutely phenomenal. I am always so honored to be a part of this beauty. I will let you enjoy just for a little longer and then we'll have a bathroom talk. In the meantime, if you are so kind to leave a like and a comment under this video, I will be so happy to hear from you and this will support my channel immensely. If you're a fellow showgirl, definitely say hi in the comments. I'm working hard on growing my YouTube presence and you helping out this hardworking gal is always highly appreciated. Kisses! It is after 2 a.m. now. I just finished dancing. I only danced for 16 minutes, so four tracks. But it took me a couple of hours to get ready for this, including the music research and putting the makeup on, putting the costume on, and setting up the lights, setting up the cameras, just to let you know that what you see on stage takes, what is it, 15 and 8 times more at least to get ready for it every time to perform it. And also it takes sometimes years of practice and sometimes special skills and education. So I just want to give a shout out to all the performance artists who are struggling now and I encourage all of you watching this video to support them and send them tips and um, buy their merch or buy their videos that they sell sometimes, buy their prints or just visit their virtual shows and send them tips. I'm gonna set myself to bed now. First thing I do normally, I take my eyelashes off, which I also loved to do in the train in New York City because, you know, everyone is staring at you. So sometimes I would stare them in the eye and do this. It is so weird to have a strange object embedded to your hair, your head, and your scalp, and your eyelashes. Oh, I think that looks cute too. Anyway, I will be washing my face and sending myself to bed. Love you all. Every showgirl takes enormous amounts of selfies. That's kind of our livelihood. Social media. You can tell that I'm in the bathroom, but we are always in the bathrooms because that's often where the dressing rooms are. Oh, this look real cute. <laughs> okay, kids, I gotta stop. Oh.